and western Mexico. It's known for beautiful desert, cattle ranching, and apparently the best carne asada in the world. The terrain has heavy vegetation, pretty much all of it has a thorn on it. Uh, the desert is full of wild game like dove, quail, desert bighorn sheep, javelina, badgers, bobcats, pumas, coyotes, and even a Gila monster lizard. There's two species of deer, coos deer and what we came for, the elusive free-ranging desert mule deer. With the lean protein rich vegetation that grows here, the bucks that the Mexicans call machos grow dark widespread antlers with dark mass. All the land in Sonora, Mexico is privately owned, which makes hunting pressure very low compared to Rocky Mountain mule deer. The cattle ranch we have permission to hunt here is 20,000 acres of arid flatland, valleys, hills, and mountains. I came here as a film crew of one to make a video and hopefully find a muy grande macho, which there is no guarantee for. But deep down, I just want to soak in some Sonoran culture, eat my share of fresh Mexican food, and completely unplug off the grid for just a few days. Welcome to Yee Yee Life. house is exactly like I pictured it to be. It's a couple of modest buildings with only the humble bare necessities but still warm and inviting. It reminds me of some kind of Hollywood movie where the man wakes up and he's lost his memory he doesn't know where he is and he's got some bandage of a gunshot wound and there's you know there's a Mexican woman speaking no English that tends to him and he's trying to recover. It's exactly what I wanted it to be. There's random stray dogs and puppies and chickens and roosters and cows and honeybees and broken, abandoned tractors. The place is like 50 miles down a dirt road from the closest town of Aramosillo. It has solar panels for lights, a backup generator, and water from a 90-year-old hand-dug well. It's completely off the grid. There's no other buildings, no power lines, not even an airplane that flies over this place. We're the only hunters that will be here all year long. All right, this is day one. I'm high racking, I'm with heel. We got Preston over there on the other, other vehicle. We're gonna go cruise around, yeah, see the ranch for the first time, get a visual. You think we'll be lucky? We'll be. <laughs> <laughs> this is Beto. His family's owned the ranch for almost 100 years. He's a world traveler and knows English as well as I do, so he's my sole interpreter here. This is Gilberto. They call him heel. He doesn't know a single word of English. He doesn't have a single word of English in him but he knows deer and he knows this country. He watches and studies the countryside relentlessly. This is Ramon. They call him Cowboy. He's the ranch hand and he's known to kill mountain lions and javelina with his bare hands. He prefers eating javelina to any other game, in fact. Any deer that's harvested, he keeps the meat for him and his wife and they use almost every single morsel, including the kidneys and the liver and the heart. I wish I could just soak up his wisdom of the land. I really like these guys. Our first morning, second day, going out, buena suerte. We'll see, good luck. It's a beautiful bring me, morning. Bring me back a good story, Pito. That's right. Here we go. All right, now that they're gone, <laughs> let's go to the good spot. Yeah, we're gonna go to where the big bucks are. We're gonna find the muy grande. So, these are, <laughs> can't talk. These are really tall high racks. How tall, how high are we right now? Eight feet. Eight feet, yeah. Plus our height. Yeah. Yeah. It's like uh, fun and distress, <gasps> but deer come to help. <coughs> this is a fun and distress call. <coughs> so 
didn't work this time, but the thought is if you play the sound of a fawn in distress, then the does will come running to help. And this time of year, if the does are coming, the bucks could come with them. No luck this time. No suerte. the rope on his hand and if we see something he pulls on the rope Ramon stops they're also communicating through the mirror right there we could point at him and tell him which direction to go pretty cool we're hunting on high racks each of the two trucks is outfitted with these metal platforms getting our eye level to about 15 feet above the ground. We drive really slow down endless roads on the ranch, scanning the brush for deer. It's monotonous, it's tedious, but it's effective for this kind of terrain. It would take literally months to cover 20,000 acres on foot with this heavy vegetation. These guys are great at reading the land and finding those needles in the haystack, but still I can't help but think that luck is a huge driving factor here in this hunt. You have to be lucky enough just to drive upon a mature buck that just happens to be standing in a visible and shootable location. I can't help but wonder how many times we're driving literally right past the target that's just out of our view. Good morning. No luck last night. I say that, but at the same time, just being out here feels lucky. I mean, it's just incredible. The place is unbelievable. We're so far from civilization and uh, just being out here on a hunt is unreal. So although we have not taken an animal, it still feels like it's a successful trip. So this is now wake up morning number two hunt number four because we hunted sunday afternoon and then monday morning monday afternoon now it's tuesday morning so hunt number four more of the same get back on the high rack drive and drive and drive and drive and look and look and look and look and stand and stand and look and squint and look through the brush and uh see if we could find a macho muy grande so here we go Before I eat lunch, to recap kind of what happened today, we finally saw on the fourth hunt a shootable buck, four by four, old, mature. We spotted him, he came, he came up, you know, but it was just really, really thick brush, and so we moved the truck up. I had the, the gun out, I would get him in my crosshairs, and it would just be covered in brush. I could just kind of see his silhouette. And then we would back up, and we would go forward, and we go four more, and every time we move the truck, he would back up probably 10 feet and disappear more and more into the brush. And there was a just an old massive tower blind uh, nearby. So we thought, well, once he get, got completely out of range and was just kind of disappearing, we thought, let's jump up into this tower blind and just see if he kind of returns to the area where the doe were. 
So we got up in the blind and we glassed and glassed. We probably spent, we say about 45 minutes yeah. at least up in the blind and, and he never came back or at least we never saw him. He lived to see another day and we lived to see another hunt. Grab some lunch, chill out. Uh, the sun's at the, the peak of the day. We'll let that go down just a little bit and head back out and drive some more. All right, we're back at the house. Incredible hunt. We didn't see the macho that we wanted. We just saw doe. Gilberto brought the doe in with his fawn in distress call, which is amazing because these mother doe come running in all panicked because they hear a doe in distress. Other than that, no buck. But we saw an incredible sunset. Me and Gilberto, with the complete language barrier, were able to sit in this blind for hours with this beautiful country and sunset, communicate on just my broken Spanish. I've never had anything like that. I've never had an experience like this. I wouldn't trade it for the world. It's incredible. Preston and his group are still out. But we do have dinner being made. Let me show you that. Ah! Pollo! Yeah. Yeah. Wings. Mess, y yeah, wings. frijoles, yeah. y salsa. Wings. Muy delicioso. Thank you. The food. I would have come on this trip just for the food alone. As a native Texan, you know, we always joke that we could eat Mexican food every day, every single meal, and I got my wish here. Each dish is authentic and local, and no matter what time of day, it's always served with some kind of tomato and pepper-based salsa beans and half limes. In fact, they even squeeze lime juice on potato chips. They use limes for everything here. The one real provision they made for us two Americans was that uh, they made flour tortillas. It would usually be corn, but they had those as well, of course. Come see this. What? <laughs> Did you get one? This way, man. What the heck? Wow! <laughs> the five by four. That's the five by, that's the one we saw on the, on the uh, trail cam. That's right, we saw him for a split second that first day and he, he ducked out on us. <laughs> he's so big he doesn't even fit in the truck. Yeah, <laughs> he's just towed. Dude! Yeah. Wow! Can't look at that. We're thinking a spread north of 30. <laughs> Look at that mass. Wow. That's, that's up here, right? Not to mention his bases. God. So what happened? Up top in that saddle area, he was glassing for us. You called it in? <laughs> he yeah. called it in. And we were in another part of the ranch. He said, you guys need to get over here ASAP. <laughs> the, the stud is out. So luckily, <laughs> the rut has just started because he was with the doe and that doe was hanging around the feeder, and so he wanted to he wanted to hang around there as well. How and, fast uh, did you guys go in the uh, man? So in the high rack, rack. It fell up, up there at 15 feet off the ground. It felt like we were going 70 miles. An hour. <laughs> Dude, congratulations, and man! We're trying to figure out where he is, and then all of a sudden, Wero goes, "Shoot! Shoot! <laughs> shoot!" <laughs> he knows English. Yeah, but the interesting thing is. But wait, there's more. <laughs> because you need to come this way. <laughs> what? Get over here. <laughs> oh! No way! Coos! No way! Look at this guy! <laughs> this is you? <laughs> this is you? Look at that's that coos. The, that's a coos whitetail. That's the, that's the one that's we the saw. One we saw the first day. Yeah. That's the one we saw with day one. This is my first coos. And I don't, you know, I mean, I don't know how you're gonna get any better than that. Look at this Dude. thing. So, Lots of character. I mean, it's that got a ton is... of characters. You know, Wero saw him. So he was eating ironwood. Yeah. And um, he was about 120 yards out. And um, he stepped out into a opening and we, we got a good shot on him. This he, is before or after the mule? Before. Okay. So we're taking- 20 minutes before. 20 minutes before. So we're taking a, we're taking <gasps> photos. <laughs> We're taking photos and Beto comes across the uh, CB saying, he's the, the big ones, the big ones there. So we're like, are you kidding me? So we load him up and we fly to get to the other part of the ranch. And uh, it's 
one of the best hours of my life. This is Preston. He's the one who invited me on this hunt, and he's my enemy. Well, I mean, he was my rival in junior high when we played football against each other, rival junior highs. Then we became close friends when we played in high school football together, and then we went to Texas A&M and joined the Corps there together. Our lives took a big turn from each other when he got into commercial real estate and I joined a band. But to this day, we keep a close bond through hunting and outdoors, which we've done together for the past 25 years. They're such a cool animal, you know, because they're up in the hills and, you know, they're not, they're, they're not like normal whitetail. You know, normal whitetail normally don't like the hills, but these guys like it. Unreal, man. <laughs> Can you believe that? Unreal. Only you, man. Only you. <laughs> in my, of everyone I know in my life, only you I, will I drop one I... and 20 minutes later you're re-engaging <laughs> another trophy. What these guys don't know, and probably what I won't tell them, is that although harvesting a trophy desert mule deer is bucket list for me, I feel like just being here with these guys in this remote location that the modern age is completely passed by is a huge success in itself for me. In a lot of ways, I feel like this is what my home state of Texas could have been like 150 years ago. So me and, me and uh, he are gonna climb up, get back in the blind, maybe see that buck we've been chasing, same one. Which, which one is that? That's the... Uh, Four by four? Four by four. Four by four. Deep, deep forks, yeah. We saw him yesterday, barely, through the brush. Oh, you saw him? He did come down? No, I'm talking about the first the time we saw oh, him. Oh, right, 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 right. On the high rack. Yeah. Moved, 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 kept kept moving back. That's right. I bet you, you and Preston are going to go and get on the... On the mountain. On the, on the mountain mm -hmm. and just glass. Yeah. And just see... You'll just check the whole valley and watch and watch and watch. Then and then me and he will be on radio. Yeah. So there's a possibility we're gonna come flying back down that ladder. Yeah. <laughs> get Ramon and uh, and go to where you guys are, and you're gonna join him. Yeah, we'll glass. Um, <laughs> this will be well, fun. It, kind of on the north side of the ranch, right? Yeah, northeast part of the ranch. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. But there's some a uh, couple of boxes, uh, good ones around the area. And uh, as soon as we see something, we'll let you know. Here we go. Let's do it. Little one. 
grande. Ramón, muy grande. Muy grande. <laughs> wow. Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. God. Shoot. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Monster four by four. Joyous. Joyous. Muchas joyous. There's cactus all over him. There's that third shot. Madre, que bueno. Hagamos para allá entonces. Dale, aquí lo esperamos. Muy grande. Dale. Big one. Hit the dirt. Oh, outstanding. Yeah. And this was uh this was a hunt. He was elusive. Six hunts. Many many bucks smaller than him. And this is one we have not seen before. That's the beauty of wide open free range. You just never know. Incredible. So until Preston and Beto get here, it's like watching a movie with subtitles and you can't keep up with the subtitles. I've been through this whole hunt. They're out there talking about what's going on. I have no idea what they're saying. And it's just, we share the bond of the buck. <laughs> but I'm excited to get back to some uh, English translation that I could actually hear. Uh, what they were thinking as the hunt went down. The only English that was spoken during the hunt was shoot, 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 which was making me so nervous. I, I took two probably ill-advised shots of this buck. He was just moving through the brush. It was about 220 yards moving through the brush. And Wero is saying, shoot, grande, grande. This is our sixth hunt. I don't know if this is the last time I'm gonna see him. I'm leaving tomorrow. Maybe I can get lucky. I felt like the blind, you know, was doing this. So it was ill-advised shots. I don't think anyone should take shots at deer like that. But I was so nervous and I did. Racked it once, racked it twice. And then I moved over to the left because I'm a left-handed shooter. So I figured if I can get one that post on that, you know, put the barrel inside that post and I could have that stability. And that sure enough got me that stability so then he's the buck slowed down a little bit squeezed off the third shot and i saw him lunge at that point and uh i knew i had him <laughs> i'm still shaking salute Cereza. salute salute <laughs> he's making fun of me he's making fun of me. where else, where else making fun of me <laughs> He says I'm nervous. I think that's what he said. <laughs> Dude! Man. Are you kidding me? Am I happy to see some English speakers? <laughs> then we can actually talk about this. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Thank what you. What happened, man? Tell me what happened. We, we were. You just held right up there. Oh, man. Yeah. We yeah. We were glass and I heard. Boom. <laughs> I was like, you got it. And I heard. Boom. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. We've got a rodeo down there. Oh, man. Wow. We came slow up down up that back road heading uh, north. We saw a little, a little buck, but it was a, it was a big three by three. Heel just bam, you know, and hits me. And and uh, everyone's like, you know, get the gun, get the gun. Or pointing at the gun. So I get the gun, I, I get it out. I mean, he's 40 yards from the truck. Perfect. He's got me just slightly quartered. Just, I, I got it on him. You know, I'm looking back at, at these guys and, 
what do we do? You know, and he's just a little bit brush, but he's like a statue. Eventually, they're just like, yeah, it's, it's not the one. too small. You look at whitetail long enough that when you put one of those big three by threes in a scope, it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's let's take monster. him, let's take him. You know, yeah. but, you know. So we come here and we decided to walk. We probably walked 300 yards yeah. just to make sure we don't scare anything up in this this crossroads area. area. We get up in the blind and uh, immediately I see a buck over here in the woods just kind of following some doe. And then we're trying to get situated. I'm setting up the tripod. We're trying to be, you know, they're telling me, stay down, stay down. You know, there's doe everywhere. And then they locate this guy. It might have been the same one. Because of the language barrier, I just don't know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> Could have been the same one I was seeing over here. He moves over to this area, and uh, <laughs> and then suddenly Wero's like, "Mucho grande, mucho gr shoot, shoot, shoot!" And like his intensity went zero to ten, <laughs> and so I'm just my heart just beating out of my chest. I get the gun up, and you know he's it's probably 220 yards, yeah. and it, the, the blind's slightly bouncing like this. Oh no! And I was just you know. Up. Shoot, yeah. I might not have a chance again. So right. I just took an ill-advised shot. And then he's he's just kind of running through these woods. He appears again. I take another ill-advised shot. Yeah. They're like, shoot, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> so then I finally got my head about me and said, let me go to the left side of the blind, get situated. I'm a lefty. Rest, let yeah. me get a good rest and get my my elbow up on the yeah. sidewall a little bit. But he was still walking, so it was still not an ideal shot. Right. But I took a third one and I saw him lunge. Excellent. And I was just like, I can finally <laughs> breathe, man. Shoot, shoot. You were pressured by them. I was, man. I mean, it was like everything combined plus no English. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh, God. That is Funny. That is a great story. <laughs> did, he, did, he, did he drop or did he get to... He ran 10 feet. Really? 10 he feet. He got in the heart, huh? You, uh, yeah, I was right. Yeah, probably, the probably bullet, right here. Nice shot. The bullet's right here. Yeah. Yeah, the bullet never made it. The, the, so that was a 30-06. Oh, really? Yeah. You can feel the bullet here. So for those wondering, that was a 30-06, and it did not make it all the way through the animal, which is... Which is crazy. It's kind of the ideal shot, actually, because it, it, it used every ounce of energy going through it, and it's just peeking out on the other side. Yeah. I will have dreams the rest of my life. This is shoot, <laughs> shoot. <laughs> You're gonna wake up like this. yes. Sueño, shoot, shoot. Oh man. Oh look at this guy. I oh, know, right? That's right. Open the stomach to see the inside what they they what were they eating. Yeah. So Beto, tell me this. So here's our meat from the from the mule deer. And so the cowboys will. Yeah. They'll hang them. Uh, what they do, since they have no electricity here at the ranch, they'll just cut all the meat up, mm -hmm. and they will dry it. Put salt in it, dry it up, and that's how they store it or keep it, and they'll They're just keep eating it for a couple of months. Yeah, a couple they'll months. Eat, they'll eat whatever they can right now, uh, fresh, for the next couple of days, and then afterwards it's all dried up. Just salt and put it on the sun and hang so, it in the sun so it'll dry up. So how long does it hang in the sun like this? Uh, fresh. Fresh. Uh, they might have it for a one or two days. One or two days yeah. like this. Yeah. The, uh, the coyotes won't come in? Oh, no, they'll, they'll hang it in the house. Or oh, they'll hang it in the house. In a safe place where the coyotes or dogs won't need it. And uh, they make uh, with the bones. They usually make stew. And, they use uh, the bones. Yeah, all the bones. Everything, except yeah, for the, the guts. The dogs eat the yeah, guts. Yeah, the guts are for the dogs. But <laughs> some, some of the cowboys do like the... Like liver, heart, or kidneys. I saw the kidneys on the coos here we were hanging. And here's one. Look at that fat on it. Well fed. Yeah, lots of fat on this coos here. Here's one of the kidneys. Kidney, ribs. Mm. 
this is crazy. Mm-hmm. In, in America, we take things to the processing plant or mm-hmm. we make sausage in our you know, garage, but we don't ever hang shoulders and hands like this. <laughs> <laughs> what, the, that's that's uh, hamburger meat for us. Yeah, they'll yeah. start uh, cutting it and uh, thin slice it. So when they put salt, it'll dry up faster. And how long because is that drying it, process? Uh, they just leave it for three or four days, so depending yeah. on how the, the sun is. But with the weather we have right now, it's going to be hanging Thank for you. three or four days. Bueno, carne fresca. <laughs> what are they doing here, Beto? They're cutting out the meat. so They're they taking the meat off the... the lower jaw off. To see the age of Will they actually use meat on the face? No, that's for the dogs. That's for the dogs. Yeah. They're going to age the deer now, huh? Yeah. Carne fresca. Ah, muy bien. Carne fresca, muy bien. Carne fresca, muy buena, bueno. The dogs love it. Like this one's got a... This one's got a belly full of food. Yeah, he's... Really <laughs> it's called living a good life right there. <laughs> food coma. That's a mule deer coma, gut coma. <laughs> it's okay. That's okay. I don't mind. That's yours. That's not mine. That's yours. It's okay. Come here. Give me a better. This one's like, I don't mind. Come here. Cerebro. Cerebro. That's the brain. Cerebro. Taco. <laughs> Taco cerebro. <laughs> Con limón. Con limón. <laughs> Sal. Sal. Cebolla. Cebolla. <laughs> One last thing to do before the video is done. I got to get a measurement on these mule deer. What do they score? The width is uh, 27 inches. 20 and 7 eighths. Right, name beam 27 eight. Yes. All right, final oh, clack calculation on the muley. 186 on One, the nose. 186. Awesome. Heck of an animal. It's crazy that that little amount of points could add to so many inches. Yeah. You got some good A length on it. Four by four. 186. Awesome. <laughs> Great. Guys, thank you for watching the video. I feel like I learned so much on this trip. I feel like I'm a better hunter. I feel like I'm a better conservationist. Uh, I feel like I know more from the land, from this culture that is similar to mine in Texas, but yet so different in so many ways. So I love stuff like this. I love traveling. I love hunting. I love the camaraderie that it brings. And I love how it could unite these different cultures and unite different languages. We did so many hunts after this elusive mule deer speaking no common language. The one language we had was find the Macho Grande, which was really cool. This is my last night here, so we're gonna go do a little bit of of more of exploring. I might get the drone up in the air, uh, maybe explore this mountain, see if we see any more wildlife. Enjoy one more meal here in Mexico. I'm gonna head back to Estados Unidos in the morning. Thank you for watching the video. Yee yee. These are memories and friendships in the great outdoors that I'll carry with me the rest of my life. And to me, that's the epitome of what yee yee stands for.